Hey, hey, hey. How is everybody doing today? I hope you're having a good day. I hope you're ready to learn a little bit of English. I'm just going to turn the volume down on my phone here. <clears throat> <clears throat> then clear my throat. I should have done that before the lesson started. Sorry about that. Um, let me see here. We'll be starting in about 28 seconds. Once I check to make sure everything is working properly, which it looks like it is. Might not be quite loud enough. Probably be okay. We'll start in 14 seconds. I'm going to go over here and cough. <clears throat> Hopefully, you didn't have to uh, listen to that too closely. Sorry, we're humans. This is how it works when you're a human. Two, one. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about space. Uh, we live on the planet Earth, but when you look up at the night sky, you just see a great expanse of blackness with some stars and sometimes you can see a planet. It kind of just looks like a bright star and of course, you can see the moon most nights. During the day, all you can really see is the sun because the blue sky kind of blocks our view of the rest of space but space is fascinating. I personally love stories about space. I like science fiction novels and science fiction TV shows. I like shows that take place in space. So, I thought it would be fun uh, to do a lesson about all of the words and phrases that we use in English to talk about space. So, once again, welcome to this English lesson about space. Before we get started, I do just want to check to make sure things are working. I think they are. Oh, there I am. Uh, I hope that you are ready to learn a bit more about space. This is a repeat lesson. I did this lesson in 2019. I think fall of 2019. So, it's been a number of years uh, and I have added a few more slides to it. Um, slides that weren't in the original. Um, just give me a moment here to clear my throat again. Sorry about that. <clears throat> I think we're done. I went for my morning walk before the lesson. And I think that's caused me to uh, have to clear my throat a little bit. Anyways, hello to Hafiez, John Wedge, Ralph. That's how you know I'm not an AI <laughs> when when I start coughing and doing other human things. You know that I'm not a robot. Hi to John Wedge, Ralph, Annie, Filippo, Tomic, Lolly, Lolly, Know That, Hafiez, uh, Safit, Omran, uh, Automation Secure Home. Uh, and all the rest of you who are here, remember to use the chat to have fun and good English conversations. Uh, do remember as well that if you are a member and you type link in the chat, then Nightbot will pop in the link for you or others to use if you want to ask a question. And again, if you have a question, please do use the link to ask that question. It helps to keep things orderly. Um, what else was I going to say? I think that's it. Let's get this lesson started on space. Space. So, I kind of explained what space is in my introduction. There's the world we live in. We walk on the earth every day. Um it's kind of gravity that keeps us here but way up in the sky, if you go further far enough, sorry, if you go far enough, you are eventually in space. We sometimes call it outer space. And we simply use this word to refer to everything that's not the earth or other planets or suns or stars. So, space is kind of that big area up in past the sky uh, where we sometimes send rockets but not all the time. Not as often as I would like. I would love it if we already had a colony on Mars. If we already were exploring space. I wish we had a colony on Mars and the moon. I would go to both of them for a vacation for sure. Um but yes, yeah, space, all of that area way up there. The solar system, let me make this a bit bigger for you. So, the solar system contains the sun and all of the planets that orbit the sun. So, I think it's Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, is it Neptune and then Uranus? I'm not sure. But anyways, our solar system consists of a central star and around that star, we have planets that orbit. Earth is the third planet from the sun uh, and so, in our solar system, we have a number of planets of which Earth is one. Um, and I think it contains the moon as well but uh, definitely a solar system 
Um the planets are in orbit because of the sun's gravitational pull because of gravity. Remember, this isn't a science lesson though. If I get some things wrong, please excuse me. You should always look things up yourself as well if it sounds like sketchy science to you. An astronomer is a person who observes space and stars and the sun and moon. An astronomer is someone who looks up into the sky. Maybe they study the rotation of planets. Maybe they study the orbits of planets or comets but an astronomer is definitely someone who regularly looks up into the night sky and studies the night sky. I admire astronomers because they can stay up uh late and not be tired the next day. It must be hard to be an astronomer because you spend most of your time uh looking at the night sky at night. So, you're not sleeping at that time. The field that an astronomer works in is called astronomy. So, astronomy then is the act of looking at the night sky regularly. You can be an amateur astronomer or a professional astronomer. You might own a small telescope and go out into your backyard at night and you are an amateur astronomer but you still are studying, you are doing astronomy Uh, or you might get paid for it. Maybe you work for a large university Uh, and you are paid to study the night sky. That would be a really, really cool job. And of course, you would need a telescope. There are many different kinds of telescopes. As a kid, I had a really cheap telescope. It was good for maybe looking at the moon. It wasn't good for looking at much else than that. Um but a telescope is a tube with lenses in it And because of the arrangement of the lenses, it allows you to see further. Binoculars work on the same principle. That's my little binocular example. Um but yeah, a telescope has an eyepiece and you basically use the telescope to look at things that are very, very far away. So, of course, things like the moon or stars or other things in the uh universe in the galaxy that we live in are fun to look at with a telescope. I'm trying to use words that I'm going to talk about as well as the words that I am talking about. An observatory. So, an observatory is a special place that's built. One moment here. I just have to pull up something. Um an observatory is a special building built to house a telescope. So, when we have a building that has something in it, you can use the word house. So, notice it's pronounced different than house though. So, it's used to house a telescope and then the doors can open at night and it can rotate and the telescope can point in different directions. I I think a lot of telescopes are located in very dark places or also very close to the equator. Don't quote me on that again. Sometimes you uh (laughs) sometimes Uh I say things and they might not be true but uh when I watch movies, often uh telescopes are located near the equator. Maybe I'm wrong about that. You guys should look that one up. But anyways, an observatory is something that has a gigantic telescope in it and people can use that telescope to look at things in the night sky. And of course, if we send people into space, we call them astronauts. So, an astronaut is a person who has gone up in a rocket or a shuttle and has made it to the edge of the uh the earth's atmosphere and they are in space, okay? So, when they are in space, um they need to wear a special suit. They need to wear a space suit. What a great name, eh? A space suit helps protect them uh because when you are in space, there's no air. There's literally nothing. Well, almost nothing. There's always a little bit of cosmic dust or something in space but there's basically nothing. Space is a vacuum. There's no air. There's no oxygen. So, you need to wear a protective suit to protect your body and to help you breathe. So, astronauts regularly go up to things like the space station. Uh they need to wear their space suit when they are up there. And so, I mentioned rocket and shuttle. So, a rocket is of course a vehicle that you use to get to space. A rocket sits on a launch pad and there's usually a countdown 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Blast off. That's what I used to say as a kid. 
the engines, the rocket engines will ignite and they have enough thrust to make it so the rocket can travel up out of the earth's um, atmosphere into space. Very, very cool. A space shuttle is very similar except that a space shuttle usually looks more like an airplane, at least one part of it because it can return and land after it has gone to space. So, um but of course, now SpaceX has rockets that can land. It took them a while to figure that out but they have rockets that can land after going to space. So, rockets have become reusable as well. So, space shuttle and rocket. A black hole. So, my understanding is that a black hole is a something in space where it has so much gravity that it pulls everything around it in including light. So, a little bit hard to understand but you might hear about this uh, if you read a science fiction novel or watch a science fiction TV show. When a spaceship gets close to a black hole, it gets sucked in. That's the term. We're in the uh, the gra- the black hole is pulling us in, captain. You'll hear them say that or put the engines on full because the gravity of the black hole is pulling us in. So, if you uh you don't have to fully understand what a black hole is except that it's dangerous if you're in space and you are in a spaceship. Hey, let's do some questions. I know there's a few in the forum. Let me pull a few up. <clears throat> let's see. <laughs> First is a joke. Vitor says, why did the astronaut break up with her boyfriend? And then the answer is because she needed some space. So, I hope you understand the joke there. Uh she needed some space. It's kind of a play on words. Um from Ruslan, hello, dear teacher Bob. How are you, sir? In, is astronomy taught in schools in Canada? Have a nice weekend. Yes, to some degree. Like students learn about the solar system. Uh they learn about things like comets and meteors and asteroids and the sun and orbits. All of the basics they would learn both in elementary school and a little bit in high school again. Um let me see here. I there was something in the chat I wanted to read. Know that said, hey, for the first time we get to see your long sleeve shirt on the big screen, Bob. (laughs) <laughs> That's cool and looks great by the way. You are welcome. And then Mode says, is it just me or does Mr. Bob sound like he's about to lose his voice? Have a sip please. Yeah, I'm not losing my voice but I went for a really long hard walk this morning. Like I was out for over an hour and it's very cold outside and I think that my voice is just a little raspy mode from being outside there. So, Uh, from know that. Hello, Bob. Do you often sit outside in the summer and look at the night sky and have you seen many shooting stars in your life? Thanks, sir. One of my favorite things to do because I live in a very dark area because I'm so far outside of the city. uh, One of my favorite things to do is to look at the night sky. I don't do it as much as I used to but if I come home at night in the summer, it often takes me a while to get to the house because I'm I'm often walking and looking up. When I was younger, I used to actually lay outside and just like lay on a like have a sleeping bag and look up. And yes, I've seen a few shooting stars. Um it's kind of fun. There's been a few times where uh, I have seen a shooting star. It's kind of fun to see those. Um from Kurdish Uncle Bob, could you shed light on the meaning and usage of the term astrophotography? in the context of space exploration. Thank you. So, I don't know a lot about it. I do know that at school, we have a telescope and you can connect a camera to the telescope and you can use it to take really nice pictures of things in the night sky but that's all I really, really know about it. Um I'm gonna skip the next question because it's not on topic. Um Couple questions not on topic here. So, I'm gonna skip them. So, please don't be annoyed uh, if I have done that. Um Martin says, hi, Bob. Have you ever seen something unusual in the sky that caught your attention? Not really. I live below um where airplanes fly between Buffalo, New York and Toronto, Canada. So, I do see a lot of blinking lights in the sky. But the thing that I would say was unusual was during the pandemic, there were no airplanes flying over at night. It so it was 
it was this long stretch of time where you rarely saw a light blinking in the sky. It was very strange that time of year. From Unsel, hi teacher Bob. Have you ever observed space with a telescope? Love from Istanbul. Uh yes. Um so, across the river from me, there's a park, a public park and in the summer, they have telescope night where um astronomy enthusiasts, an enthusiast is someone who really likes something, bring their big telescopes and set them up and peop- the general public like people like myself can go and they will help you look at things. So, it's very very cool. I I was able to do that a few times. I might do it again. Uh, I like the emojis Unsel by the way. Uh again, I'm gonna skip questions if they're not related to the topic. Hoong says, Canadian astronaut on space station named Chris Hadfield taught me how to how things work in zero gravity. If you were in space, would you enjoy it? Little switch there. Would you teach us about space? Yes. I think I would enjoy it but then again, I don't know. Like if they needed people to volunteer to go on a spaceship to Mars, that interests me but not for the length of time it takes and then I would miss Jen and I would miss my kids. So, um n- yes and no, I guess is my answer there. Um if I was in space though, I would definitely teach you about space for sure. Um from Helix, hi Bob. Hope you're doing great. Can you can we oh, can we use fly too close to the sun in casual conversation? While I get the meaning, I never actually hear someone say it. You could. I don't think it's super common but by the way, when someone flies too close to the sun, it means they do something um bad or dangerous that they shouldn't have, right? Like um let's say someone drives 200 kilometers an hour all the time. You would say, oh, they just like to fly too close to the sun. Basically, you're saying something bad is going to happen eventually uh because that person likes to fly too close to the sun. This is where I get the official meaning. For someone to be overly ambitious or greedy or to overreach themselves to do something that is unattainable or unachie- or to reach for something that is unattainable or unachievable uh in an irresponsible way. Yes. So, to fly too close to the sun. Never a good thing. Who did that? Who was the guy who's didn't something melt the wax in his feathers? Silas says, hello, Bob. Are elders in the Saudi desert know the direction. Spring and winter times, rains and seasons from the stars. Yeah, it's interesting. You can you can tell the time of year by where things are. Like yesterday, I could tell it's late December, early January because at 11 o'clock in the morning, the sun is very low in the sky in the northern hemisphere. So, you can certainly see um that uh you can kind of figure out what time of year it is based on things you see in the sky and the moon as well, right? You can tell what time of the month it is. Um let's see here. Freddie from Earth. Hi, Bob. Would you mind explaining the difference between space and room? In which case are they correctly used? For instance, is there space in a room? Merci beaucoup. Yes. This room has a lot of space in it. If you look behind me, it's a pretty big room. There's a lot of space. Um but I could also say um there's a lot of room over there. So, space and room kind of have two meanings, right? Like, I like living out in the country because there's lots of space. Basically, a lot of open areas. Um and it's nice living out in the country because I have there's lots of room for my vehicles outside. So, in that case, I'm using them differently than you know, there's space up there and I'm sitting in a room. So, definitely a few different ways to use those words. Okay, let's get back to the lesson. Let me have a sip of water first and read the chat. Let's see. People chatting away. That's what I like to see. I like to see when people in the chat are chatting. Um uh yeah, Yamil says, hi, Bob. Is it possible to watch the streaming in the channel after the live? Yeah, you can watch this when it's done and there's also a shorter version that comes out in just a little while. Mode says, oh, look, the couch is back. Yes, the couch has returned and it's not just it's not just fake or anything. That's like it's actually there. I'm not gonna go sit in it but there is actually a couch there. Okay, let's get back to the lesson. Let's do that. 
Everything seems to be working good. The sun. So, the sun as most of you know is actually a star. Um it just happens to be our star and so, the sun is a giant ball of fusion I think it is generating heat and light. Um if it wasn't for the sun, there would be no life on earth. We rely heavily on the sun to keep our planet warm and for our day night cycle. So, in order for us to have daytime and nighttime as the earth turns, we are either facing the sun or facing away from the sun. And so, this is what helps our crops grow. This is what helps us get vitamin D. So, when I go outside and I go for a walk, sunlight on my skin helps me to get vitamin D. Um it's just basically even the oil we get out of the ground is in some way stored sunlight. Did you know that? And then we have the moon and we have stars. Uh the moon is of course our friend in the sky at night. That's what I remember from a children's book that I read when I was really really young. Um and the moon doesn't really have an atmosphere and so, when astronauts go to the moon, they have to wear a spacesuit. and also the moon has a number of craters on it. I'll talk about craters in a little bit because it regularly gets hit by things that leave craters. Um by the way, the moon also has phases. So, you can have a full moon. You can have a a half moon. You can have a a new moon which is when there's no moon at all but uh definitely the moon has phases. Let me find the official phases of the moon. The new moon, the first quarter moon, the full moon, the waxing moon, the third quarter moon. I think you understand what all those mean. I really like it when there's a full moon because you can see when you go outside at night. And then of course, we have uh, what are what are called stars. Uh when you look in the night sky, you see lots of stars. This is what I think makes the night sky the most enjoyable. I really like looking up at the stars. In fact, when the moon has is has fully disappeared, it's really nice because you have a good view of all of the stars in the sky. And we also have what's called constellations. A constellation is a group of stars that we think looks like something. That's the best way to describe it. Not quite sure if you can see it but in the northern hemisphere, we have something called the Big Dipper. In in this picture, the Big Dipper, see if you can find it. Um it's kind of sideways. It's near this side of the picture um and it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven really, really bright stars and it looks like a ladle that you would use for soup or um maybe to drink water. Maybe you would dip some water out. And the cool thing about the Big Dipper in the northern hemisphere is the two stars at the far end of the cup part of the Big Dipper at the very if they line up and they point to the north star which is on the far side of this picture. I should have put some arrows shouldn't I? Sorry. I should have done that but anyways, uh constellations um there's uh, things like Virgo and Orion. There's different uh constellations that we see in the northern hemisphere and you see different ones in the southern hemisphere if you are down below us. But basically, a group of stars that humans think look like something. When a planet goes around the sun, it's called an orbit. When the moon goes around the earth, that is the moon's orbit. So, an orbit refers to the path that something in space follows as it goes around something else. Uh it takes the earth 365 days to go around the sun. Actually, I think it's leap year this year. Is it leap year this year? Might get an extra day this year. Someone should check that. Um but yes, orbit is what determines our length, the length of our year. So, we orbit around the sun. Um just checking. Sometimes during the lesson, I get curious. So, there's 365.26 days in the earth's orbit uh and that's why we need to have leap year every four years uh and then I was gonna check is it leap year 2024? Um 2024 is a leap year. So, there you go. I have to teach an extra day then. That's okay. (laughs) Um and then I mentioned this before. There are 
planets. So, a planet is definitely not a star. It's not like our sun and it's not a moon. A planet will definitely orbit a star. Our planets orbit the sun and then again, oh, I think I got the order wrong. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and then Neptune. I think I said it the other way for the last two. Um generally, I think a planet has to have an atmosphere of some kind in order to be considered a planet. Um again, not a science lesson but uh planets are large spheres. So, a sphere is a big uh like a ball in space um and we live on the planet earth. An asteroid is not a planet. It's much smaller than a planet. It's usually just a bunch of rock or ice or metal. It does orbit the sun. So, we do have an asteroid belt in our solar system. I think it's out by Saturn or something like that or somewhere out that way. I don't actually know if it's that way. (laughs) That way. I don't know where it is but it is just a whole bunch of um basically rocks. Space rocks. So, asteroids though can have frozen water or even other gases that are frozen or just rock or metal. Um all of the things that we have on earth can be also found in asteroids. So, they can be very rich in different materials. Um a meteor or a meteorite and a falling star is the same. Is that the next slide? Shooting star, falling star. So, a meteor is a piece of debris something that falls from space to earth that's not man-made. So, if a big chunk of rock comes into our atmosphere and falls to the earth, we would call it a meteor or a meteorite. It's the same thing. I think a meteorite might be a little smaller. I don't really know but um when you see a falling star, it's actually a meteor or a meteorite. They are the same thing. So, a shooting star or a falling star isn't actually a star. That would be bad. If a gigantic star hit our planet, that would be bad. Um but definitely uh sometimes at night, you can see meteors fall and you can find meteors. There's actually a uh there was actually a news story of a man who recently found a meteor I think on the roof of his house and it was very, very valuable. And yes, I sometimes we actually have meteor showers and if you go out at night, you will see a lot of meteors falling from the sky. A comet. So, a comet is a little hard for me to describe. It's a giant ball of rock and ice that orbits the sun and as it orbits, it leaves a trail behind it. It kind of reflects the sun's light and I'm not sure if it has its own light Um, but the most famous comet is Halley's Comet. Um so, if I put famous comet Halley's Comet is the most famous. Um visible every 75 to 79 years. So, and then I'm gonna get the official. So, a comet are large objects made of dust and ice that orbit the sun best known for their long streaming tails. So, dust and ice. There you go. Very cool. Um I don't remember if I've ever seen a comet. I don't think I have. An eclipse. There's two kinds of eclipses. There's a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse. Um there's actually an eclipse coming up in North America in April. There's going to be a a, like a a a full solar eclipse. Um I think it's happening after the school day but I think we're having a longer school day on the day of the eclipse because the path of the the eclipse goes right across the United States and then right into our part of Canada. Um so, we're gonna get all of the special glasses and we're gonna stay late because I think the eclipse um happens around four o'clock and I'm not sure the exact date but an eclipse is when the moon goes between the earth and the sun or when the earth goes between the moon and the sun. So, a solar eclipse is when the moon crosses in front of the sun. Here, we'll do an eclipse right here. Uh, My face is the sun and then this is a solar eclipse, right? And then don't look. You need special glasses. Uh, Otherwise, you can damage your eyes. So, the Milky Way. So, the Milky Way is a galaxy and the Milky Way is the galaxy that we live in and it's so big that you can see it. Like, we're in it 
but you can still see it sometimes at night. You do need to be somewhere very, very dark in order to uh, see the Milky Way but you can kind of see parts of the galaxy that we live in. Not sure why they called it the Milky Way. Probably because it looks kind of white um but then as I said, the Milky Way is a galaxy and the galaxy that we live in The Milky Way is a galaxy and the galaxy that we live in is the Milky Way. There you go. There's a a a sentence that makes sense but sounds kind of silly. Um a galaxy is a collection of all different things in space held together by gravity. So, there is a spin to a galaxy and there is some gravity and it has stars and planets and everything that you can imagine existing is in a galaxy. Um really fun though. Sometimes at night, you can see it a little bit here but it has to be really dark and a really, really clear night. And then, of course, that is what the universe is made up of. So, every shiny part of this picture is a galaxy. So, our galaxy is enormous but the universe is even bigger. The universe is basically everything that exists is the universe. So, we live in a very, very big universe. If you can think that just looking in one direction, there are that many galaxies. It's a little bit crazy to think, well, how many galaxies are there? How many galaxies in the universe? Two trillion galaxies. Okay, that's just a little crazy. There are two, it's estimated that there are between 200 billion to two trillion galaxy in the observable universe. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. So, hey, let's do questions. Let me get members only chat going here. Um let me see here. I have to click the button. Um what screen is that on? Why did that disappear? Oh, it didn't disappear. I just forget. There we go. Um and if you remember, you can ask questions directly in the chat and I will continue to answer questions from the form. <clears throat> let's see here. Um So, this is not on topic but I'll answer it. Lukeson says, teacher Bob, do you think after 40 years old, somebody can speak English fluently? Yes, definitely because my grandparents came over probably around that age and by the time within a few years, they could speak English fluently. My my grandparents and my parents came from Holland. Um so, yes, I do think it's definitely possible. Um let's see here. By the way, members, it is members only chat time. If you do have a question, please ask it in the chat and I will answer it as clearly as possible. Another question slightly off topic. Good morning, Bob from Alyssa. Could you tell us what is the difference between a walk, a stroll, a hike? So, a stroll is when you walk slowly. So, a stroll isn't exercise. You're just walking and enjoying it. A walk is just a general term for walking. So, you could go for a brisk walk, a stroll, um, a slow walk, Um, you could go at an easy pace. All of those are a walk. A hike is when you walk in the countryside. When you walk in nature, you're going for a hike. So, you're not on a flat surface. You're on a path or something else. John Wedge says, astronomers say the Milky Way and Andromeda will merge in a few billion years. Yeah, it's too bad. None of us will be here to see that. That's too bad. That would be that would be interesting to see what that looks like. I guess it would be Um, catastrophic as well though. Know that says, Bob, if you were given the chance to travel into space, which planet would you rather visit? The moon or Mars? Thanks in advance. I think Mars. I think uh, I would love to visit Mars. I'd be curious to see what a planet looks like when it's all red the way Mars is or reddish. Um but yes, definitely Mars but I would probably have to stop at the moon on the way to Mars. That would probably be where you would, there'd probably be like a um I'd I'd have to make a connecting flight on the moon probably. Uh Lolly says, astronaut and specionaut, same meaning. I have not heard specionaut. I'm not sure about that word. It is not an English word I am familiar with. Perhaps it is a French word. Let me check for a sec. Spationaut. Regardless of nationality. Oh, I see. 
So, astronaut is somewhat North American, isn't it? So, spationaut, I don't even know how to say it. But it looks like in France, spationaut. Cosmonaut, yes, I've heard of that. I'm just looking up a few things. Very cool, Ollie. I think it's the same mode. Kakachan, well, that sounds cool and it kind of looks like a silver river. I'm not sure what they're talking about. I have to scroll back to see now because I'm curious. We call it Silver River. Ah, yes, got it. Milky Way. Um, Wanda, hi, teacher Bob. Could you please explain again the difference between meteor and asteroid? Thanks a lot. So, a meteor lands on Earth. An asteroid just flies around the sun or orbits the sun. So, I guess an asteroid or a chunk of an asteroid could eventually become a meteor but a meteor crashes down. Um, John Wedge. Hi, Bob. No question today. Just listening to this amazing topic that I personally love. Awesome. Thanks for being here, John. Freddie Wolf. Bob, what bothers me is all the light pollution that prevents us from contemplating the stars in the sky. Are you also affected by this phenomenon in your area in Canada? In my area, no. I actually live in one of the darkest parts of the Niagara area. I live in the Niagara Peninsula. Um, there is, however, a large greenhouse about 10 kilometers from our house which sometimes they're um they have their lights on at night and there's a lot of light pollution. Freddie Wolf's talking about the fact that as humans, we have so many lights that it's hard to see the night sky at night because it doesn't get dark enough. Um Ralph, hi, Bob and everyone. Do you use void and space in at any time in the same way? Not really. Translated to my language is quite similar but warranty void does not make sense with the word space instead. True. Um we would say that space is an endless void. We would use that. A void is a place with nothing in it um but generally, we use the word space. Vitor, I find Carl Sagan quite interesting. I don't know if you watched or read something but I recommend. I think I read Cosmos when I was younger. I might read it again someday. Is that his book, Cosmos? I didn't watch the TV show Cosmos though. Um let me see here. Lolly says, thanks, Bob. Pas de problème. Freddie Wolf, what do you call the constellation La Grande Ours in English? The Big Bear. La Grande Ours in English. Oh, I guess we call it the Big Bear. I'm not familiar with it. I should go out and look for it tonight. Uh let's see here. Where's my next question? Freddie Omran. Hi, hello, Bob. Do you have any astronaut in your country? Do you have a space station in Canada? So, we send astronauts to NASA. So, Canada usually has one or two astronauts that either work with NASA and sometimes go to the International Space Station. I don't know if we have an astronaut up there yet but we ourselves in Canada do not have a space program. We don't launch rockets in Canada. Um so, often we work in cooperation with the American uh, organization NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Hafiez, it's hard to think that the stars we see are from the past. Shows the vast distance when it takes so much time for the star's light to reach our eyes. Hurts my brain a bit thinking about it. Yeah, I think it takes eight minutes for sunlight to travel from the sun to earth. Is that how long it takes? Um how long for light to get to the earth? Uh eight minutes and twenty seconds. So, when we see the sun, we're seeing um what happened eight minutes ago, right? So, very, very, very interesting. Thanks, Hafiez, for that comment. Nastron says, hello, best Bob. Hello to you. John Wedge says to Lolly and Freddie, I'm going to jump into French this year. Often or <laughs> awesome. I don't know why I said often. Uh Mode says, oh, Mode gifted one uh learn English membership and who got it? Kaka Chen was gifted a membership by Mode Eggs. Thanks, Mode, for doing that. And Kaka Chen, welcome to being a member. Uh courtesy of Mode Eggs. Very nice. Um Loli says, great, John Wedge. Freddie says, Bob, I think you skipped my form question. Would you mind to check it? I will have a look. Um know that says, speaking of space, Bob, do you have another great science fiction book that you're reading? And if so, what is it? I actually don't know the title right now. I think it's called Grown, G R O N E. I have to double check. It's on my Kindle. Um, but uh, yeah, ask in the comments and I'll post it there. Mode says, here's a little something for the seventh anniversary of this channel. Thanks, Mode. Oh, by the way, it's been seven years uh and a couple days. Pretty cool. Um, I'm just gonna check. Let's see, Freddie. 
Yeah, Freddie, I think I talked about space and room. Um, I'm pretty sure I did go over that. I'll talk about it again in a sec though. Maybe you went to get a cup of tea when I was talking about it. Um, let's see. Thanks a lot from Kakachen. No, that says happy new year. John Wedge says, so there's a little conversations going on there. So, I have to be here. Happy choir master, Mr. Bob. Moat says, enjoy the gift. I think you need your luck too because I don't get to choose the recipient. Yeah, that's true. It's just random. So, the um, very cool. And then New Words with MP has gifted a membership to someone whose name I can't say. We're gonna have to run it through Google Translate and see what it gives me and then I will get back to the lesson. Um, put it on. I guess that's the name. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Where am I clicking? Yeah, I'm gonna turn members only chat off. I know it's a minute early but um we're gonna get back to the lesson in just a moment. I'm gonna pull Freddie Wolf's question up again first though. Just give me a sec here. Um let me see if I can get it. There we go. Hi, Bob. Would you mind explaining the difference between space and room? In which case are they correctly used? For instance, is there space in a room? Merci beaucoup. Hmm. Why am I feeling like I did answer this? Oh, well, I'll explain it again. <laughs> what did I say last time? So, I think I said something like, in one sense, they are the same. Like, there's a lot of space on my property. There's a lot of room on my property. There's a lot of space in this room. There's a lot of room in this room. You can actually say that in English. Wow, that room's got a lot of room. You can put lots of furniture in that room because there's lots of room. So, it sounds weird but we do use it that way. Um but uh yeah, they also have different meanings, right? Like, I'm sitting in a room and above me there is um like if you go outside of the atmosphere, there is space. So, not sure I answered that as best as I could, Freddie, but uh, there it is. Let's uh, let's finish this lesson off though. What are we on? Satellite. So, humans decided that if things can orbit planets, why don't we make things and stick them in orbit? And one of the things we make is called a satellite. Uh, satellites are generally used for communication. So, a satellite is a man-made object that we launch into space on a rocket and then it circles the earth or it stays in exactly the same spot. There's something called geosynchronous orbit which is pretty wild. What that means is that as the earth turns, the satellite stays in the same spot. That's pretty cool because then you know that at a certain spot in the sky, the satellite will always be there. Um generally, uh initially satellites were used for communication. They are now also used for things like GPS. Like, the GPS in your phone connects to three satellites and then you know where you are. They're also used to take photographs. When you use Google Maps now, the images are from satellites. But satellites basically are man-made things put into space. I think it can be non-man-made as well. I think a a piece of rock could be a satellite but generally when you say satellite, we're talking about um something like that that we put into space. We also put things in space like space stations. There's an international space station where different astronauts from different countries can go and do scientific experiments. They can observe the earth. They can see how plants grow in zero gravity um but it is I don't know. I always feel claustrophobic when I see images of people in the space station. When you're claustrophobic, you don't like being in a space where there's not very much room. Um let's see here. A crater. When an object from space hits the moon or hits earth, it often leaves a crater and on earth, there are large craters in different countries. Um and what it's caused is when a gigantic meteor hits the earth with so much force that it makes all of the dirt and rock kind of move out of its way because of the force of the impact. So, uh I think there's a large crater in Canada somewhere. 
There's definitely craters in almost every country um but I'm wondering if northern countries get hit a bit more. I'm not sure. Again, not a science lesson. The atmosphere. The earth is surrounded by the atmosphere. This is the air we breathe. When I go outside, I breathe in and I breathe out mostly nitrogen and oxygen and a few other gases. The oxygen is the important one. I think our the air outside is 20 percent oxygen or something like that. Somewhere in that range and this is what we need uh to survive and to live. Um the higher you go up though, the thinner the atmosphere is. So, if you climb a mountain, it's harder to breathe at the top than it is at the bottom. There's not I guess there is less air but the air is more condensed at the surface and as you go up the mountain, the air is less. There's there's just less air. The air is thinner. There we'll we'll say it that way. But the atmosphere is the layer of air around the earth um that has clouds and air and all of the things in it that we need. A light year. So, a light year is the distance that light travels in one year. So, the sun as we said is eight minutes and 20 seconds from the earth. So, it's it's nowhere near a light year away but if you um go far enough out into space where you're at the part where it would take light one year to get there from the sun, you would be one light year away from the sun. It's one of the things that lets us know just how big space is. The fact that we have to measure it using something called light years. The distance that light can travel in one year is used as a membership as a measurement. Nebula. I don't really know what a nebula is but I do know that it is a visible thing in the sky with a telescope um where it's just a whole lot of cosmic dust and other things in space. So, I think one of the most popular nebulas is the Horsehead Nebula. Um we're gonna look up meaning of nebula even though I did last night. A cloud of gas and dust in space visible in the night sky usually with a telescope as a bright patch or as a dark silhouette against other luminous matter. Luminous meaning things that emit light. So, here's the simple thing. It's a cool thing in the sky to look at. That's what I would say a nebula is. And now, we're gonna go into the world of science fiction for a little bit. Uh UFO stands for unidentified flying objects. Um object. I don't personally believe in aliens or UFOs. I've never seen a UFO or an alien. Some people think there are spaceships that come from other planets and they fly around at night in our uh night sky and that on those spaceships you would find an alien or aliens. So, I personally don't think that they exist. I think we would have seen them by now but who knows? I've been wrong before. Uh but UFO stands for unidentified flying object. Um and then uh an alien would be anything any creature that's not from earth and not human. Okay? So, that is what I would say is science fiction at this point. Not fact but science fiction. Hey, that's the space lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're one of the 317 people watching, don't forget to click that subscribe button uh and I will answer a few more questions. Looks like I have six or so left uh and then we will wrap this up. So, let me get the questions on the screen. John Wedge says, one light year equals 9.5 trillion kilometers. Oh, very cool. Um yeah and Mode is saying to Kakachen, room can be countable and uncountable. If you refer to a single room like a hotel room, then it's countable. But I think Freddie was asking about the other usage. Yeah, like you can see this shirt's a little big. There's a little too much room in this shirt. So, that's the uh the other version of it. Um then Ashley says, how do you do you mind me asking a question? How often do you do this live stream? Every Friday. Yeah, pretty much every Friday. I rarely skip. Uh I think I skip if I'm not feeling well. So, once or twice a year maybe three times a year I skip but generally it's every Friday morning. Um let's see here. Let's do some questions. Oh, let me actually find. Give me a second here to get back to 
Yeah, let's see if this one. From Kakachan, hi, teacher Bob. Are there some fairy tales about space in Canada? Thanks a lot. Have a nice year. No, not really. Although Santa must fly his sleigh really close to space but I'm sure he's still in the atmosphere. Um but no, not really. Um I guess fairy tales more take place like in the forest or in the olden times or something like that. And then when we talk about space, we generally call the stories science fiction. Um let's see. From Rena, hello Bob, glad to meet you again. How often do you see shooting star in your country? At least once a year. Um it's kind of fun to accidentally see one like because you you can't just go out and see them. Usually, it catches your eye. Maybe I'm walking out to the flower field in the summer and it's dark and Jen's working with her headlamp on. Um I might all of a sudden see a falling star. So, I would say I see about one a year. Um they're they're very cool. Dora says, hello, Bob. Today's topic makes me think of a movie called Armageddon. Have you ever seen this movie? Well, there's two movies where a huge uh meteor is gonna hit the earth, right? Um Armageddon and then there's another one. I can't remember. I've seen both of them a long time ago. Um I think Armageddon is the one where they they fly up and then they blow up the asteroid or meteor. One of the two. Uh let's see. From Nakim, how many people in class? Well, in this class, there's 309 people watching right now which is pretty standard. Um if I do a really popular topic, we usually end up with about 400, 450 people. Um if I do an average interest topic like this, 300 is normal, 340. Um I think one topic I did where there were only 250 people, I I just thought you know, my goal isn't to do popular topics, right? I just wanna do all the topics. Orman, hello, Bob. How are you? Do you know names of some constellations? Well, I know the Big Dipper, the Little Dipper and I know Orion and oh, I can't remember the name of the other one but no, I should learn my constellations. Uh does sound travel faster in space? I actually don't think sound travels in space. I think sound needs to be able to make waves through something and I don't think sound waves will go through space. Um does sound travel in space? Sound is carried by atoms and molecules in space with no atoms or molecules to carry sound waves. There's no sound. So, yes, there you go. Have aliens ever visited earth? I don't think so. That's my official word but what do I know? I'm an English teacher. I don't really know uh the details of all that. Um let's see here. We're done. I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm done with questions. Um Pedro says, I'll rewatch such a great topic a little bit late today. No problem. Deep Impact. Is that the name of the movie? Is that the other one? Yes, probably. Uh Greenland is one movie with an asteroid. Oh, that's a recent one, right? With Gerard Butler. I think I did watch that one. Do they get to the do they get to Greenland or not? Who knows? Um Garav says very interesting lessons. Like your lesson teacher. Thank you for watching. Um yeah, let's wrap this up everybody. Uh thank you to everyone for watching. Uh remember this lesson will come out in a shorter version. Um about 25 minutes long. Easy to rewatch for you and repetition is very important when learning a language. So, even though it's boring to watch a lesson again, try to watch or listen to Uh, the shorter version that will come out in a couple of days. Um it's just good for your learning. Um and then the other thing I would say is this. Um it's kind of funny. I don't usually ask you to do stuff for me but Jen was asking what would you want from your viewers as a thank you or a, a gift for seven years of doing lessons? I would say this. Just go watch one or two of my videos from start to end. That helps you. It helps me. It helps YouTube know that my lessons are good. So, if you want to celebrate the seven-year anniversary of Bob the Canadian on YouTube, go watch two other lessons from the start to the end and give them a thumbs up if you haven't already done that. That would be a great gift. Gives me a little boost. A little boost in the YouTube ranking system. Anyways, Thanks for watching. I hope you have a good day. I know I will. I have one more weekend before I have to go back to work and uh we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna say bye to a few people. Bye to I'm gonna start by saying bye. 
<laughs> can't get my glasses here. Let's see. Bye to Vitor, CS team, John Wedge, Amir, know that. Uh, Omran, Lolly Lolly, Hafiez, Pedro, Doris, Freddie Wolf, Unsel, Ruslan, Maxime, Helga, Ashley Chen, Ralph again, Unsel, Clive, Kaka Chen. Bye to all of you. Uh, bye to Mode Eggs. People are saying bye to each other and then I say bye to them more than once. Um, by the way, there will be a new lesson on Tuesday and a live stream next Friday again. There will be no live stream tomorrow though. I have to, I have a bit of stuff to get done before school starts again. Bye to Teresa and Terrace and Amir Nastron. Bear Wilson here. Bear Wilson's been around for a while by the way. Uh, Cats and Kitty, G Starry, Maned, Kun, Kuntin, Gorav, Mimi, Telushi. Bye everybody. Have a great weekend. It's been fun. I'm gonna turn the light off. Oh, the button doesn't work. Try to push it. I think I need new batteries. Oh, so dark now. (laughs) Bye.